Guys, I'm back. I'm at Toll Puddle. I am with, uh, I'm so sorry, Bevis. Bevis. Right. Bevis. And I should have got that in my head because I know a guy called Bevis as well. Really? Um, yeah. His surname's Bevis. Oh, right. Okay. But tell, oh, right. tell you what, I'm really honest because this guy is a campaigner for. Campaign for nuclear disarmament. The CND. If you know what the CND is all about, you know, you're much more educated than a lot of people are out there. And I think CND still has a role to play in UK politics. And I'd love to get your thoughts and opinions about, you know, what you feel, not just about Trident, but, you know, your, about the, the, the world in general and why nuclear weapons should be disarmed. So, take it away. I'll oh, take it away. Okay, well, it's interesting that there was a big conference organized by the United Nations. Uh, I got material on the story about it. I wanted to take it away with you. Um, there are actually over 122 countries uh, passed a resolution declaring nuclear weapons and the only nuclear weapons that be utilized as illegal. Um, very interesting. Um, our government refused to even send a delegate to that conference. Yet, our government, um, historically, has signed the non proliferation Treaty, um, which was signed way back, 34 years ago, which commits Britain to, as rapidly as possible, in the place a decommissioning and getting ready for nuclear weapons. Um, the Prime Minister at the time was Cameron, yeah. and he took point blank and refused to send any delegates. So, actually, on a world scale, we are the rogue states. We are a tiny minority of nine states in the world who have nuclear weapons. The rest of the world, the view is they should be illegal, should be decommissioned, international agreement for close monitoring, to ensure that nobody develops them again, and they should all become you know, I think it makes the world a far safer place. Um, and the argument that has been given against us has been oh, well, um, I will get rid of mine if they get rid of theirs. Well, you do that by negotiation, you do that by attending international conferences, you do that by declaring uh, ownership of the weapons of the and our government is still fast Sorry about that, the camera move, guys, don't worry about it. Um, you was also talking about, a little bit earlier with me, about the current state of, you know, the danger of nuclear weapons if they're ever used. You know, uh, uh, there, there was a recent video about if India and Pakistan went to war, and it was a nuclear war that would decimate the entire planet, not just because of the initial blast, but the nuclear fallout would spread right across the world. But you was also talking a little bit more about Ukraine, Russia, so on and so forth. That, so from here, what is the sort of resolution that you've got, guys like you know, Ukraine, Russia, the UK, the USA, which is the only country that's ever used nuclear war, still in yeah. history? Um, how do you persuade these guys to disarm? Okay. The I don't think any sensible, rational politician um, will use nuclear weapons uh, by choice. I, I don't think they will because they know they're not idiots, they know the devastation of humanity and the worst crime against humanity that's ever happened because it's not talking to three hundred thousand killed. Radiation spreads throughout the world, it's sufficient nuclear weapons, and it's not many are exploding. They create dust up into the atmosphere. And the uh, impact of that is that the leaders have to be in the winter, because the amount of dust in the atmosphere reduces the sunlight, and therefore that reduces the temperature of the planet. Enough of these are no way to crack at all. The volcano went off many hundred yeah. years ago now. You can still see evidence of it in trees looking at the rings of growth. So what they crack it out because they're hard to groom. And that was a tiny comparison to the dust that we've got on the country. But going to the example of Ukraine uh, and uh, the Soviet Union and so on, it's very interesting. I mean, nuclear weapons are actually useless in that situation. Um, both sides know it, that's why they're not using them. But the danger is you have a trigger situation where an uh, incredibly high risk that people think that something might be able to attack. Um, if you read a report produced by Chatham House as one of the sources called Too Close to Comfort, yeah. you can find it on the web. It identifies uh, several occasions where we've very, very nearly gone through the nuclear attack. 
good because uh, it looks as though the enemy is attacking you for some reason. Um, and in reality, in every occasion that so far, um, individuals personally So the only alternative to this nightmare scenario is international agreement to make the recognition of the vast majority of UN countries has agreed to and the system of monitoring to make sure that nobody has a The only way we can save this planet is by negotiation with diplomacy. The nuclear option is catastrophic for humanity. Uh, and on that note, you know, I mean, I could talk about mainstream, you know, how, how mainstream media has shaped a lot of our, our opinions growing up, whether it's Fist of the North Star, if you're a Japanese anime fan, Terminator series, if you like that kind of movie, you know, that nuclear strikes have caused widespread decimation of humanity. So, with all of this, why do you feel that there's still such a reluctance to disarm? Uh, very interesting question. Um, I'm going to go back to us. A long while ago, and he uh, did a speech in the United States. He did a, a long speech, speech to the nation, standing down and done his job, and this was his final message to the nation in America. And this is way back in the 50s, 60s, and 50s. Uh, but worth reading, it's on the web. And he said, the biggest threat. So many levels because they need to protect the industry and the money they make. And that is as true today as it's ever been. The military industrial complex. Yeah, the military industrial complex. But if it comes to the UK, many reports have shown that it's what we call a rotating jaw of top military people to the military going into the military armed sector. And all the government committees are made up of representatives of the armed sector. All protecting this massive financial investment in terms of the government. I genuinely believe the real reason we can get it is because people make money. Massive How can you make money if you can't use it? Oh, because the taxpayer pays for them. It's ah. the perfect product, isn't it? Oh, it's wonderful. I'll sell you a Trident missile. Oh, yeah, you're never going to use it. Of course, you're going to use it. It costs you, can't estimate the refit of Trident's 200 billion yeah. pounds. That's yours and my money. And we've got a cost of living crisis. Come on, guys. Yeah. Uh, so, again, if people want to get involved with the CND or want to support them, more importantly, raise the issue and maybe promote it to local politicians yeah. that can you know, have the voice yeah. raised in Parliament. How would you go about... Oh, you go on to uh, where? Look up CND, campaign the media this afternoon. List and there for you, all the local groups around the country. Um, join the local group, get involved, join us on the campaign. Guys, um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to Bevis today from the CND, and you know what? It's also been an education as well. And I, I hope that you guys can get involved, support, and more importantly, you know, give these guys the support that they need to fight the fight for a better world. Guys, uh, Bevis, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Take care. See you later.